Not many Canadian artists had their paintings accepted in the prestigious Paris Salon to be viewed by tens of thousands of art lovers. Mary Alexandra Eastlake did, and she was still in her 20s when that first happened in 1889. Mary Alexandra Bell, as she was originally called, found her niche early, becoming especially well known for her images of mothers and children. She also painted portraits and landscapes. Born in 1864 in Eastern Ontario, she studied art in Montreal, New York and Paris. In 1897, when she was living in St. Ives, Cornwall, she married Charles Eastlake, an English landscape painter. The couple lived in England, but travelled widely, painting and exhibiting in Canada, the United States, New Zealand and Japan, among other countries. In 1889, when Eastlake was living in France, she painted La Petite Malade Basse Bretagne, a big oil. It belongs to the Art Gallery of Hamilton. Eastlake offers three crowd-pleasing things, a loving mother, a peasant theme, and a clearly composed painting that tells a story. The three figures inhabit a cottage interior. A child's shoe lies on the floor close to our entry point, it belongs to the little girl on the mother's lap. The woman holds a spoonful of food in her right hand, an obvious caring mother. But by having her hold the spoon some distance from the child's mouth, Eastlake shows us the child is not eating. The bowl the food came from is in the hands of an older girl kneeling on the floor. This helps to draw our attention to her and she looks like she's almost ready to turn into a caring mother herself. The clothing, especially the mother's headdress, points to a rural family in Lower Brittany. The meagre surroundings speak of their poverty. Eastlake taps into the idea, made popular about 50 years earlier, that peasants are heroic because they suffer so many hardships. She ennobles them by making them look like traditional religious figures, such as Mary with the Christ child. More up to date is the sick child as subject. Illness and death among the very young were very much discussed at the time as part of an end of century melancholy. To viewers in 1889, the empty shoe would have been ominous, painting of the future with no child's foot to fill it. Images of mothers and children from all social classes were popular throughout the 19th century. The subject was embraced by Eastlake and by her contemporaries, including Impressionist painters like Berth Morisot and Mary Cassatt. As women agitated for the right to vote, moralists reminded them that their duties were to their husbands and children. Paintings of dutiful mothers reinforced this traditional stereotype. Some were painted by female artists such as Eastlake and Mary Cassatt who did not embrace motherhood. Motherhood is central to Eastlake's Annunciation, in which she updates the traditional religious narrative. This is the moment when the angel Gabriel tells Mary she is going to have a child, a special one. The painting belongs to the Montreal Museum of Fine Arts. Gabriel kneels in a bountiful garden and looks up at Mary, who wears contemporary clothes. She stands with hands piously clasped against her chest. In contrast to the sombre, earthy tones of La Petite Malade, this work sparkles with vivid colour. Eastlake's interest in painting rural women reappears in Mobilisation Day 1914, subtitled French Fisher Women Watching the Departure of the Fleet. Painted in 1917, it belongs to the National Gallery of Canada. Three women, possibly all from the same family, gaze out to sea. 
where their men have gone. Since these are women whose men fish, the sea is a familiar place where life and death clash. Eastlake ups the tension by reminding us that this particular moment is happening during the First World War. This means the men's chances of returning are even slimmer. The woman on the far right holds a baby. The space between her head and that of the central woman is filled with tiny figures of rural women and their houses, a reminder that all of these women belong at home. In Little Harbour from the Art Gallery of Hamilton, Eastlake tackles the landscape. Her serene view of a town by water is filled with varied but orderly houses. It appears to be based on the harbour at St Ives, Cornwall, where she lived for several years. Eastlake returned to Canada with her husband in 1939 and died in eastern Ontario in 1951. Eastlake was a prolific artist. She was praised by critics. She had a big solo show at the Art Gallery of Toronto in 1927, and she is well represented in the National Gallery. But that success did not guarantee her a secure footing in Canadian art history.